So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create an invisible clothing effect all in Photoshop. Let's lock and load. Whoa. Okay, let's put that down. Just start the video. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create an invisible clothing effect all in Photoshop. And yeah, I just had to kind of try and get the Nerf gun into the video somehow. So uh, yeah, bit of fun. Probably gonna go and shoot my brother later on with it. But anyway, we're gonna jump straight into the tutorial now. So let's jump to the screen. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see I have an example of the type of effect we're going to be creating on screen. Here's all the layers if you just want to Take a look at that and have a go at doing this yourself. So over here, I've got an Adobe stock image. We're going to be using this subject here on the left and the main tutorial PSD document. And I've just got a snowy scene here. You can do this with any images you like. Just take a subject with some clothing and then find a snowy scene. You can find loads of images online, free images, stock images, it's all good. These are the two I'm gonna be using. And here is the document size if you'd like to follow along with similar dimensions. So first of all, I'm going to go over to the Adobe stock image, select the marquee tool and just drag over the subject here on the left and then go up to edit down to copy, switch back over to the main tutorial document and go edit and paste. And the subject is uh, quite large compared to this image. So let's go to edit down to free transform and I can scale this down and we'll position her in the center and press return or double click to set that transformation. Fantastic. Now I'm going to cut the subject out onto a transparent background. I'm not going to spend too long on this. I've done a bunch of different tutorials on how you can cut a subject out of a background in a variety of different ways. There's a link in the video description to my Photoshop playlist. So if you want to check out a bunch of videos on that, then feel free to do that first. I'm going to show you how you can do this with select a mask and the quick selection tool now though. So here's the quick selection tool. It's in the toolbar on the left and you can find it under magic wand tool. Just left click and hold. And there we go. The shortcut key for this is W on the keyboard. Really, really quickly, I'm just going to select all of the blue. And if you need to adjust the size of your selection tool brush, just use the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. You can see that changes the size there. So I'm going to capture this piece here in our arms. I'm going to use a nice small brush. And I feel like this tool's got a lot smarter over the years. It's very, very good at making a pretty decent selection. And if you do catch too much in your selection like this, what you need to do is hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and it will do the reverse. So it will remove from your selection. So I'm doing this really quickly, but spend a little bit longer and get a fantastic selection. And once you've done that, well, we've got the background selected at the minute. So let's go to Select and down to inverse, it flips it around the other way. So now our subject is selected and we can go to the bottom of the layers panel and we'll just add a layer mask and it masks everything else but the subject. And with the mask selected, now we can go up to select, down to select and mask. If you are on an older version of Photoshop, this will be called refine edges, similar thing. And you'll see this window appear. You can see I've got the Refine Edge tool selected over here on the left. So let's just zoom in. I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Like I say, spend a little bit longer with your cutout and it'll just look so much better. So I'm just gonna click over here and just brush over the hair. So even though you can't see it, what it's doing is it's sampling the background from the original image, that very bright blue. And it's just removing all of that that sampled area and keeping the hair. So that was a really, <laughs> a really quick and uh, quick and dirty cutout, but it will do the job for this example. So let's click OK. And then I'm going to right click on the layer and select convert to smart object. Now, if I want to go and refine this cutout further, I can simply double click on the smart object. I've got the original subject image, the mask all here. I can make any changes. And then when I close this down at the top, all I need to do is just make sure I click save to save those changes and it will update the main document. So smart objects are kind of like a document within a document, incredibly useful things. So I will give this a name now. So we'll call this one subject body. So just double click on the text 
for the layer name and you can rename it. And what I'm going to do is right click and select duplicate. And we'll call this one transparent clothing and press return. Now I do want the clothing layer to be underneath. So let's just go ahead and drag this underneath. And if I switch off the subject body layer with transparent clothing selected, I'm gonna go up to here and change the blending mode to multiply. Now, depending on the image you're using, the color of the subject's clothing, if you have color in the t-shirt, for example, so it might not be white, what you're gonna to want to do first is desaturate the color with a hue and saturation adjustment layer, strip out all of that color, and then try some other blending modes. Maybe, for example, it might be that overlay gives you a better result. And with the new kind of live preview in the latest version of Photoshop, you can just preview all of these things. Uh, I've prepped this in advance, so I know that Multiply is gonna give me the result that I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna select that. But depending on the image you're using, you might find more success with a different blending mode. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a layer mask to this layer. You can do that from the bottom of the layers panel. And sometimes you get this, sometimes you don't. You might get like a weird kind of edging, like a single kind of line. So I'm just gonna select black, as my foreground color. And with my layer mask selected, just grab that brush tool and we'll go up here to the drop down. And the brush I'm gonna be using is one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes with hardness of 0%. It's one of Photoshop's default brushes. Honestly, I use this brush for like so many things and I'm just gonna brush this away. So if you get anything weird happen like this, just grab that brush tool and brush it away. And if you want to adjust the brush size nice and quickly, you can use the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we've got rid of that strange line with the mask still selected. This layer is called transparent clothing. So I'm just gonna remove everything but the clothing. Now, what I don't need to do is remove literally everything because if I turn this top layer on, you can see that the arm, everything else, the subject's clothing, their hair, their face, that's gonna be on top of this layer. But something you will notice is if you have like a multiplied layer and then another version on top that doesn't have a blending mode or that is set to normal, you get this weird kind of line, this sort of doubling up around the edge here, this strange edge. So if I turn this off and back on, you can see that this transparent clothing, this multiplied layer is causing this issue. So I'm just gonna brush this away. So you don't really need to go and remove absolutely everything but the t-shirt. You can do if you want to, but I'm just focusing specifically on the edges. So I'm just removing all of that edge. So I'll turn this on again so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just brushing around. We still do have a very strange edge here and we'll figure out what that is in a moment. There we go, so nice and soft around the edge. We'll do the hair as well. And as I say, I'm doing this really quickly and really crudely. Of course, please do take a lot longer with yours. You'll get a much better result. So let's turn this layer off and switch the other one back on. And we'll see how it looks. So again, we've got that strange line. So I'm gonna add a layer mask to the subject layer as well. And let's just, let's get rid of this nice and quickly. There we go. So I do have this strange thing around the edge here. This is probably because I did a very, very quick cutout. So if you take a bit longer on your kind of cutting out and masking of the subject that earlier stage, you won't have issues like this, but I'll leave this for now and I will show you how to fix this later on. So now we're on the subject body layer. So we need to do the opposite. So remove the entire t-shirt, but leave the subject. So these kind of two layers that I'm working on mostly, they're kind of opposites of each other. One has the piece of clothing with a multiplied blending mode. The other one has just the subject, their hair, their skin, their uh, other elements of clothing that aren't gonna be invisible with just the blending mode left at normal. Now you can see this takes quite a long time. We can actually just use the quick selection tool. Just do a really quick selection of the t-shirt. It's captured a bit too much of the face up here. So I'm gonna hold down Alt on the keyboard, Alt or Option. 
and it will remove from the selection. So there we go. Fantastic. It's going to make this part of the process <laughs> considerably quicker. So we can just brush all of this away. So we're just leaving the multiply layer showing through something like this. And I can turn this back on and voila, you can see it brings back a lot of that detail. So just to recap, we've got the transparent clothing with a multiply blending mode. And then this layer, we have no blending mode, but the clothing completely removed. So I can turn both of these back on. Now I can click on the transparent clothing, go to the adjustment icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And we're gonna select, but you can do levels or curves. Let's go for levels. And what I can do is I can control the shadows and the highlights, and you can see it's affecting the entire image. But if I click this icon here, what it will do is it will add this as a clipping mask and only affect the layer below it. So this is only going to affect the transparent clothing layer. So you can see now as I adjust this, I've got a lot more control over those shadows, those midtones, and those highlights on the clothing itself. So I'm not going to mess around with that too much, but that's just something you may wish to add if you want to kind of reduce the shadows, for example, or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is select the subject, hold shift, select the transparent clothing layer. And at the bottom of the layers panel, click the folder icon. This will group them together. And I'm just going to call this folder subject. And what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to this as well from the bottom of the layers panel. And if you do get anything weird like this happening, what I like to do is just grab a nice small brush. I'm still using this same soft round pressure opacity brush. And I like to just brush this away. I'm just going to do this really quickly on this part of the arm to show you. So you can see here we've got some kind of jagged pixels around the edge. And then just gently brush into it. Now I like using a slightly feathered brush and then just bringing my brush size down if I need to because if the brush is too hard it just the cutout looks too clean if I do this for example let's just brush this really hard you can see it just looks way way too clean so something like the pen tool for this example would just give like the cutout would be too perfect in my opinion so I like using this soft feathered brush because I can just brush around this and you get a, a very slight bit of feathering, a bit of blur on the edge of that line, which is what you would naturally get in a photograph. You wouldn't get like a super crispy clean edge around your subject. Well, this part does take a little bit of time and it's considerably easier if you do have a graphics tablet. I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro for reference. And it's just a much more natural hand movement. And you get control of things like pen pressure as well. So I'm only just going to do this bit. You get the idea. Just go around the edge, tidy it up. And because we're doing it on the group layer here, the group layer, it will affect everything inside that group. So you can kind of go around the entire edge of your subject, clean it up and make it look fantastic. So down here, you can see it's especially bad. Actually, I'm just going to show you this quickly. There we go. Nice and quick. Even though I cut into the subject a little bit then, just because I'm doing this quite quickly for the tutorial, you don't really notice. You notice a big blue line around the edge much more than you do me kind of just chipping into the subject's trousers a little bit. And there's bits down here as well that you can kind of go and refine. So what's this? This is the subject body. So I can go in and I can work on this a bit more. So you can spend a lot longer on this, but of course I'm doing this super quickly. You can see this is pretty terrible. What I would normally do is zoom in, tiny, tiny brush, and just brush like this. It does take longer, but the end result is gonna be just so much more magnificent. Anyway, I could spend hours doing this, but you get the idea. I'll show you the example at the end again as well. So there we go, uh, subject is done. We've created the transparent clothing effect. Now what we're gonna do is select the background, right click and duplicate. And I'm gonna call this displace. Now you can use a displacement map 
for this next step, but I'm just gonna do this another way, a slightly cheeky way. So let's expand our folder. And what I'm gonna do is hold Command or Control, hover over the transparent clothing layer. And it does that, that is the right layer. Aha, now here we go. Hold Command or Control, hover over the subject body layer. And then what we'll do is add a layer mask to our background duplicate. And if I turn everything off, you can see, well, that is actually the opposite of what we need. So with the mask selected, just go up to image adjustments, invert, and it will flip the mask the other way around, similarly to how we did it at the beginning. And I'm just gonna remove this with the brush tool and black. So simple masking stuff. Let's switch everything back on. And you can see this kind of does run outside the edge. So I'm just gonna go and clean this up super quick. There we go, nice and quick. So remember black is your brush tool color. We'll remove from the mask like this. And white will brush back into the mask. And you can press X on the keyboard to swap between black and white. So it's just a much more effective, non-destructive way of working. Whereas something like the erase tool, for example, much more permanent. So we've got our displace mask here. And what I'm gonna do is unlink the layer in the mask. So normally, if I move this around, you can see the mask. No, nope, let's hide all that. You can see the mask moves with the layer. If I unlink this, the mask stays exactly where it is and the image or the layer will move around independently. So if we turn all these back on now. So what I might need to do is lock this folder. It keeps selecting the layer above it. So I'll lock the folder and I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And if I turn on the background, you can see what I'm doing is displacing this ever so slightly. This is a very manual way of displacing something. And what I could even do is go to filter down to distort and I could ever so slightly distort this with a variety of different effects here. So let's go for twirl. And you could uh, distort this to the absolute extreme. I'm gonna go for something really subtle like 10. And you can see it just distorts it ever so slightly but you can mess around with that as much as you like. So there we go, that's displace. And I can unlock this layer. If you are trying to select a certain layer in Photoshop and there's another layer on top of it, just like lock whatever's above it and then you can work on the layers below it and then unlock the other stuff again once you've finished. So let's unlock that. And now to finish off, we're just gonna do a few more adjustment layers. So let's go to the adjustment icon at the bottom. First, I'm gonna go hue and saturation. And I'm going to click the drop down here from master and we're gonna focus on changing just the reds. So this is gonna focus a lot on the skin tones in the image. And I'm gonna desaturate this because of course she is uh, in a very uh, Arctic snowy looking setting. We don't wanna go too far, but I'm just gonna take some of that color out of her arms, her face and her neck. And let's go down again. And next we'll do color balance. This is an awesome adjustment layer, so we can affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm gonna bring a bit more yellow into the midtones. And with the highlights, gonna bring a bit more yellow in there, maybe a touch more cyan, something like this. And if I go down again to the adjustment icon, I'm gonna to go to levels. And I could bring down the shadows, bring up the highlights, and then adjust the midtones in between. So just find something that looks pretty cool and if I zoom in, you can see there's lots of areas here where we could have made a better bit of... <laughs> I can't speak today. There's a lot of areas here where we could have made a better selection, taken more time, but it doesn't matter. We can still go back, select our subject folder mask, and remember, use that soft brush. Just brush all, all of the laziness away, all of the areas, the bits where we've kind of really cut corners. And this is quite a good technique actually, because you can create a really cool effect. And once you know that it works and you're like, yep, okay, I'm gonna commit the time to doing this properly, then you can go back and start really working on refining those edges. And as I said earlier, as promised, here's a slightly more refined example that you can see on screen. 
But anyway, uh, yeah, there we go. We are done. So there we go, that's how to create an invisible clothing effect all in Photoshop. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.